Hi traders and welcome to the technical analysis market wrap on Friday the 8th of October. So it's non-farm payrolls day again, it seems to have rolled around pretty quickly this time and we've seen some pretty good moves this week on a lot of the majors and the indices. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any opportunities for today or early into next week. So we'll start out here with the Aussie US, USD on the daily. So you can see we've had a bit of a recovery this week. This is a daily chart. So we've got like the last, you know, four days really have been pretty strong. We saw a big pullback on this one. It tried to push past the uh, 20 moving average and then uh, failed and then came up again. And now this time it's had a real crack at the 50. So it's hovering around that sort of 73, just a bit over 73 cents. It is definitely at a point of roll reversal though. This is the uh, area that concerns me for any long opportunities from here because we know that we've got very strong support around this level here, which is gonna to prove to be resistance now. And we've got the 50 moving average right in its face as well on a daily. So we know that historically the 73 cent has been a pretty important zone. Uh, if we take it right out to a weekly, I think you can see it really highlights it. So apart from what we've seen most recently, we've also got this here and we've got the resistance right through here and about a month and a half of support right through there. And that's only up until 2018. So we know it's very, very strong this level. So it's going to take a little bit of breaking. Uh, most importantly as well, though, we've got a weekly cross of the 20 and 50 moving average. Like that's happened now. You can see that the 20 is definitely below the 50 with this week about to close. So unless it absolutely blasts through the stratosphere tonight, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, that close will uh, be confirmed. And then, you know, we've got a, a sequence of what could potentially be a decent pullback. So realistically, we need to go to the daily to isolate the opportunities. We know this is a very, very strong level, but we have to be mindful that there is a cross on a very important time frame, and we need to heed uh, its caution. What, we would, what we'd be looking for here, though, in saying that is if it does break above here, if a daily closes above this level here and above the 50, I'd be waiting for a conservative entry. So wait for the pullback to test that level from above. So I wouldn't be taking the first break because I think there's just too much resistance in front of it. But if it does happen to break through and we get a decent close, a daily close above this level, then wait for it to come back and test the 73 from above. And then all of a sudden that role reversal is actually working for you rather, rather than against you. And then you can start looking for long opportunities back into that sort of 7450 area but ideally probably we want to see a reversal here we want to see a smaller time frame change of trends we can go to a four hour or a one hour um, look for a series of lower highs and lower lows on one of these time frames and start trading off this level that's probably the more preferred trade for this one but we can play at both sides but you've got to wait a little bit longer for the long to get above here on a daily and close there all right we'll move over to the us dollar cad so we've seen a bit of weakness in this one uh, this week. You can see that it's actually been a little bit opposite to what the dollar index has been doing. Um, yeah, a little bit to do with probably the oils um, drop as well. Well, um, But you can see we've got a sequence of lower highs and lower lows now on a daily chart. Um, that's not ideal, not by any stretch of the imagination for yeah, what should be a stronger pair at the moment. But... Yeah, it, it failed again at that tw at the 129. It's, it certainly tried. It did. It. Oh, look, we got some good trades in getting up there. Um, didn't quite reach the 130 again, but here here it is. Um, certainly doing the lightning bolt on the way down, and you know it has confirmed it now. So it's got the you know there is a reasonable level of support here though. And look, there's no surprises. We know it's non-farm payroll, so you know we see the same thing every single week, right? On the day of non-farms, everything is at basically a roll reversal zone or a support and resistance zone. So it's good that we're able to trade into the those zones coming into it but it makes it difficult to trade of course up until the announcement so really the way you're going to play this one is probably just wait and see with the um with the levels around this 125 50 area which is pretty much where it's at now we know it's very strong here um you know the fact that it's actually going down um on a sequence of lower highs and lower lows probably concerns me a little bit for the long but in saying that it did that uh, a few times before and it did find support here so you can certainly treat it with um the you know, the bias that you can do both sides i think it just i'd probably wait and see on this one this is not the ideal trade at the moment We'll just keep an eye on it and see how it goes. So we'll move on now to the US dollar yen. Um, this one certainly has shown the strength that we wanted it to show. Uh, it had the big move, obviously, before this week, and then it's come back, and now we've seen a bit of a resurgence again from that one, for around the sort of 110.80 area it got to, uh, bounced off there quite nicely, and now it's finding itself at 11, uh, 111.60 ish. Look, it's been a good trade, this one. You know, it's been technically really sound since it broke out of this zone. And yeah, it looks like it's making a real assault on that high again at around that 112. So if that strength continues, I, I think that it's got plenty of momentum on the um, on the 
moving average MACD here. We can see that there. You know, the 50 and the 20 are separating again. So it's certainly not showing any signs of slowing up. And that's just really a healthy pullback. I mean, if we draw a fib on, on that, I'm sure it's going to be uh, a decent number. Like we'll go to, let's have a look. Pop that up there. You can see that it's just pulled back just past the 38.2. Okay, so you know, between the 38.2 and the 50, which is a sweet spot for a FIB pullback. Um, so, you know, very, very good relaunch zone. There's no surprises there that it's actually trying to push up. And the dollar index strength certainly indicates that it'll do that. But I think what we want to be looking for here is a smaller time frame change of the trend now um, to basically join the trend. You can see the 20s popping it up and, and propping it at the moment. If we see a break above this level here on the four hour, I think that gives us the lightning bolt confirmation again that, that we're at assaulting the, the top end, which would be great. Very happy with that. Um, and if you want to go, if you want to look for an even quicker trade, you can go down to the one hour. Um, and we can see we've got a mini double bottom here. Uh, basically, again, same deal though. It's got to break this level here. If it does that, uh, even on the one hour, we're probably looking pretty good for a, a real attack on the 112. It's a bit of a scalp up until that level. Once we get a daily close above the 112, then we can start pushing up higher to that 114 level that we know is really strong. Uh, in the um, opposite side for this trade what we would need to see is basically a breakdown of this low now so realistically if it makes a lower low uh, below the one at 110.80 area and a daily close below that uh, it's going to take a bit of movement because it's got the 20 and the 50 moving average right in its face and it's got all of this uh all that was resistance is going to be support now so the the way down is probably harder than the way up but it could certainly do it i'd play the lightning bolt either side on this one if it does the um the new high here and pushes past here we'll go to the 112 scalp and if it pushes past the 110.80 and starts to short off then we'll start looking at that 1950 level again so both levels are fairly sound and you can trade both of them but it's just a case of waiting for which side is going to break and trading the right one all right, we'll move over to the US dollar index now. So uh, this is very similar to the uh, US dollar yen at the moment. It's had a bit of a resurgence over the last few days. It's also trying to push to a new high. You can see here on the daily, you can see that it's hovering around that sort of 94.15 area. We really want to break that uh, 94.50 before we start to take this one long. But if it does break up past that level, this is going to look very, very good for around that 97 level. So definitely a good uh, opportunity if it does get above there. Uh, the short is, again, a very similar scenario to the US dollar yen. It basically has to make a lower high. Uh, but as soon as it does that, of course, it's got resistance right. Uh, What's well, going to be support? What was resistance over here is going to be a pretty tough barrier for it. So you can see, I'll put the horizontal line there so you can see it more clearly. That is going to be trouble for it the minute um, it approaches it. So it's got a 20 moving average and a very strong roll reversal zone to contend with on the way down. So realistically, the easier, the easier trade, although it's trying to break to a new high, is probably on the upside. Uh, so really, it's a pretty easy trade, really. If it breaks a daily close above this level here, we take it long. And if it breaks below this level here, and I would be waiting for the break of this level, not just the break of that uh, low there. You want to break this um, annoyance before you start taking this one short, then you can start going short. And it's a very, very clear direction for both of them, just waiting for which one breaks. But my bias is definitely to the long on this one. I think the dollar strength is uh, set to continue next week. Uh, so hopefully that'll continue tonight after non-farm payrolls. We'll move over to the Euro USD, which is obviously the main uh, benefact benefactor of the uh, dollar strength there, and you can see that this has actually been a, a bit of a bloodbath for the dollar um, for the uh, Euro USD. The, the dollar index has gone up. This one, of course, has gone down. Uh, it's broken down the the pattern now. This is the daily. You can see we've got the double top there. That um, was not really. It's not that great a double top, but it was definitely a roll reversal zone that sold off significantly. Uh, the four hour we had a him uh, head and shoulders in the direction of the trend completely played out perfectly now it's even trying to flag uh, it still looks really really weak for mine uh, it, it's at a, it's at a level now like it's broken a lot of key support that level there was very key support and that little mini pull back there was just a golden opportunity to get in uh, and that's where all of those patterns were the uh the in double uh where we had a double top and we had a head and shoulders so realistically uh it's probably if you're not already in it uh it's a case of wait and see for the next pullback the next real level for this is around that we got 114.50 there is some support at 114.50 but um the real strong level is going to be around that 113.80 area you can see at this point here is going to provide the next serious resistance um for the way down which is of course support so 
What we're looking for now is effectively a pullback on a smaller time frame if you want to trade this. Um, you can see it's kind of happening now. The thing is, though, you've got to be mindful that this is not going to do a hell of a lot today. Uh, more than likely, it's going to hover around and do nothing. It's uh, basically gone into non-farm role already. Uh, this is non-farm mode, we call it on the four hour doing basically a, a lot of nothing so just be really mindful that although patterns look like they're setting up and levels look like they're really strong just be very very mindful that we're going to see a probably a relatively flat day until you know about one or two o'clock in the morning uh, melbourne time so just keep an eye on that but it's set to continue next week i think we would be looking for this trend to continue uh, early into next week get non-farm out of the way and if we do that, then we're going to start selling off the 20 moving average again and pushing down to that 113.80. First uh, point of call, 114.50, then 113.80, 113.50. So it's good trading uh, all the way down there. There's not a lot of, uh, I guess, nuisance um, information in front of us. We're basically going to break through all of the supports of the, um, the 114.40. 50 area so you can see here there's not a lot there we've already broken past the, the main part and it's a pretty steady run all the way down so keep an eye on it uh it's got a lot of work to do to reverse of course um to reverse this we've got to do effectively a double uh well a daily higher 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 low sequence and that's going to take a, a week or two to form so yeah realistically the easy trade is for the short side but of course if technicals take us there we'll do both so whichever one it gives us but my ideal trade here is to keep pushing it short and trade the uh sell-offs off the 20 moving average say on a four hour but again just be very very mindful today is going to be a pretty flat day yeah, so non-farms is a tough one, isn't it? We don't see a lot of movement on a lot of the pairs. A lot of it's happened already for the week, so now we're in a bit of a consolidation. The last one we'll look at is the S&P 500. This one has tried to push up today. Uh, this is still in a dead set downtrend. Uh, don't worry about that. This is a daily. It's making lower highs and lower lows, selling off the 20. We've got the 2050 cross, so you know, realistically, it's got a lot of trouble in front of it um, to go up. But of course, this is very reliant on data, and that data is going to come out tonight. So it tried to um, yeah, push up fairly high today. It went up to the 44. Uh, 28 area uh, you can see that it has pulled back a little bit through today's trading of course we haven't closed yet because of the daylight savings change so it is technically still open but yeah again it's probably going to be one of those things where it's probably going to close around that 44 which is yeah to be expected we know that around um, uncertain times we always gravitate to the levels where it is comfortable and 4400 is very comfortable for it so Depending on what it does um, from the news announcement uh, perspective, if it's a really good result and the market likes it, then yeah, we're going to be looking at breaking the highs at around that sort of 44, 70, 80 area. If it breaks through there, it's probably going to charge up and try and test the, the highs again. But probably the, uh, the more consistent trade might be that it might find some pressure here and actually continue on the way down. I think it's a pretty easy trade on the way down in that if it does uh, start to sell off, you know, you've got a very clear target in the first instance. We know that the that 4260 area is a very clear target for the first short. Uh, and if it does break past that level, which I, I believe it might, I mean, if it does sell off from here, I'm not so sure this level will hold this time because it's had a pretty big resurgence. And, you know, if the sellers take control again, they're probably going to push it down to around that low four. 42 uh, and then failing that the next real targets 39.50 which is a, a long long way away but it can happen fairly quickly you might be surprised so let's just wait and see on this one uh it's going to be pretty much around the 4400 by the time um, non-farm comes out i'd imagine it's going to be flat very very difficult one to trade if you're going to scalp it today but if it does start to move uh through the new york session like you say you've got two very clear paths you've got a path down to that 42 uh, 60 area which is a really easy short uh, and if it does actually the opposite and goes up and breaks and closes above these moving averages or we get some uh, four hour closes above this level, then we can start pushing up to the high 44s again. So I'd keep it in that range and then we'll see what happens next week. But I'd say the trend will be well and truly established next week one way or the other. We're either going to be heading up here or we're going to be breaking down to the 4200. Yeah, that is probably a, a pretty good chance. So I reckon next Friday when we're talking about this, we're going to see one of these two levels breached. So whichever one it chooses, uh, we will take with it. So I hope everyone's had a great week's trading. I think the start of the week is really good. Today's going to be very flat, so just be mindful of that. Uh, be careful of the news and watch your stop losses if you are in. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you all next week.